My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, the first advice that we should be listening to is that of developing the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is known as Taqwa Allah. This is why every time we listen to a talk that is connected to religion, we will hear the speaker say, Ittaqullah, fear Allah, be conscious of Allah. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. My brothers and sisters, it is important also for us to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a beautiful religion. This religion is not only a set of rules and regulations governing what we believe, but over and above that, it is governing the entire life that we lead. So yes, the primary objective is to develop and to purify what we believe. And thereafter, it extends to every little aspect of our lives. And today, I have chosen to speak on a topic that affects every one of us. Every one of us has bad habits. Whether you like it or you don't like it, you have to admit that you and I have habits that we need to deal with, we need to eradicate, we need to admit that we have. Human nature makes us look at other people and think to ourselves that these people have a bad habit. You see someone smoking, for example, and you thank Allah saying, Alhamdulillah, I am not a smoker. But that man has a bad habit. Not realizing that, yes, he does have a bad habit. It is a very bad habit. It needs to be cured. But at the same time, I need to look within myself regarding the bad habits that I have as well. Don't let it make you sit comfortably. The fact that you are looking at others who might have habits that you consider taboo. Yet, you might be a person who lies a lot. You have a habit of lying. Sometimes people don't realize that they lie because they've become so used to the habit. Good people also sometimes a lie that does not really have so much of damage that is caused. So they think that if it is a lie that is just that which does not cause much damage, it's okay, it's fine. That's a bad habit. That is something that needs to be dealt with. It is something that you need to admit. And in order to admit a bad habit, you are going to have to search. The month of Ramadan is around the corner, as we know. My brothers and sisters, many of us in the month of Ramadan, we like to increase our good deeds. So mashallah, you find people reading the Quran, you find people engaging in acts of charity, you find people reading more of their salah, for example, even that which is not farad, that which is not compulsory, you find them engaging in it. All this is beautiful. But what about eradicating the bad habits you have? That is also a part of your obligation unto Allah. What is the point of a person who's fulfilling so much salah? They are giving so much of zakah in charity and they are doing so much, but they don't ever look at their bad habits. Sometimes my brothers and sisters, let's admit our weakness or our bad habit is that we disrespect other people. The way we speak to them is very low. It is not the quality of a Muslim to speak to another human being in a derogatory way. The Prophet, peace be upon him, according to the narration, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was not vulgar, he was not abusive, he was not one who cursed others, he was never using derogatory terms to refer to others. So much so that one day, a person happened to greet the Prophet, peace be upon him, with a wrong greeting. In fact, he was a hypocrite who greeted saying, Assamu alaykum, which means, may death be upon you. So, Aisha radiallahu anha heard the statement and she was absolutely upset because obviously it requires a good ear to pick up what exactly was said. So when she heard it, she responded in a very hard way, which was equal. She says, وَعَلَيْكَ السَّامُ وَاللَّعْنَةِ And upon you is not only death, but even the curse of Allah. So the Prophet ﷺ immediately cured her, immediately guided her by saying, مَهْلًا يَا عَائِشَةِ 
Take it easy, O Aisha. Relax. Why? What is the difference? We are believers. If these people are hypocrites, you don't need to drop yourself down to their level in order to prove a point to them. No. Take it easy. If they say, Assalamu alaikum, all you have to say is wa alaikum. You know, if they have said death upon you, you just say, and you too. That's it. So what happened is, in a respectful way, you gave it back. This was something unique because it was not a bad habit of Aisha radiallahu anha. No way. She was going out to defend the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, which is our duty. Sometimes the way we defend ourselves or the way we claim to defend the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, we do it in a way that had he been here, he would never have condoned it. It's something we need to think about. He would not have condoned it. So therefore, my brothers and sisters, think very carefully, even before you speak. I want to spend a moment speaking about smoking. You and I know that the whole world is going on an anti-smoking drive. We're talking here of the non-Muslims to begin with and then the Muslims. Why the non-Muslims to begin with? They own the industry, the tobacco industry and whatever else you have. They will confirm that you are not allowed to sell a pack of cigarettes without writing on it that smoking kills or how harmful it is to the health. And you and I know that as Muslimin, this body you have is an amana. Amana means it's a trust entrusted to you by Allah. He's going to take it away. He has taken it away from millions and billions before us. This body, you look at your fingers. These fingers are going to be taken away from you. They belong to Allah. Allah has given them to you as a trust for a short period of time. Wallahi, it is your duty, my brothers and sisters, to make sure that you provide the best for this body that belongs to Allah. Provide the best for it. The way you eat needs to be good. Don't have bad habits when it comes to food. Some people, they eat food that is so harmful to them in a quantity that is harmful at a time that is harmful. So what that means is, learn to eat food that is beneficial, not necessarily tasty. I was once speaking to one of the young boys who was busy eating chocolates one after the other and I told him, you know, this is bad for the health. He says, uncle, you, every time I'm eating something sweet and tasty, you tell me it's bad for the health. And then I thought about it and I said, look at the power of Allah. Things that are sweet and tasty are not necessarily beneficial. Amazing. It's Allah testing you to say, do you know what? There will come a day when we might force you to stop having these chocolates. There will come a day when we might force you to stop having red meat, for example. You and I know that at a certain point, the doctor will tell you, hey, for you, no more sugar. May Allah forgive us. May Allah strengthen us. But we used to enjoy it. So if you relaxed and you had a good habit from the beginning, inshallah, in a lot of cases, you'll be able to space it out, right? You might be able to have it right up to the end, but in due proportion. The difficulty is sometimes, like for example, with us, we develop a belly after a little while. You know, you clock 40 years and with the striking of that particular age, you find that your belly starts developing. That's not so true. It is supposed to be a person's health that he is conscious about where you know that if you eat late at night and you sleep immediately after eating, it's not so good for the health. So perhaps you want to find out when exactly you are going to eat and when you are going to sleep to keep a gap enough for you to be able to have a decent sleep as well as a decent meal. Strike a balance so that you look after your health. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. I'm not picking on those with a belly, but all I'm saying is there is something we can do about it. It belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, how much you eat, also sometimes we develop bad habits in that regard. Most of us, myself included, when there is something good and tasty, we keep on eating until we are full. Do you know the teaching of the Prophet, peace be upon him in that regard? He did not use to eat until he's full. And he has actually taught us that if you really want to eat, if you really want to eat to a maximum, then try and divide it approximately into thirds. A third for solids, a third for liquids, and a third for air. How many of us, we've just eaten a third, and then we say, okay, I'm done. To be honest, it's a bad habit we have. Do you love the messenger? Peace be upon him. Imagine if you were in his company and you asked him for advice. 
And he looked at you and he said, when you eat, only eat a third of solids, a third of liquids and leave a third for air. What would you say? What would you do? And you would go back and say, that's the advice the Prophet, peace be upon him, gave me. Subhanallah. Wallahi, he's given you that advice. And he's given me that advice. But guess what? When the mandi is laid, we eat, mashallah. When the food is in front of us, we eat, mashallah. And sometimes we've eaten to our full. And after that, the desserts appear and we forget that we've actually eaten. I remember I once went somewhere and we had eaten and the desserts came. They were far more than the main course in quantity. And I looked and I said, brother, I'm quite full. And you know what? To sell the product like a salesman, he says, do you know that when you chew the desserts, they will go down and they will find their way into the gaps that were created when you were choosing your food and when you were chewing your food. So therefore, just go for it. Go for it and eat. And I'm like, subhanallah, is that the teaching of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So therefore, maybe if you are eating, you need to know at the beginning of your meal what there is for a dessert so that you can plan for it and calculate. Anyway, let's move on a more serious note. The issue of smoking, my brothers and sisters, those who are harmed and affected by this bad habit, please give it up for the sake of Allah. I'm calling upon you today very seriously. I don't want to discuss detailed rulings and so on. You and I know the minimum that is said about it is that it is a very bad habit. It is a waste of money. Wasting money is another bad habit. Sometimes people waste money on cigarettes. Some people waste money on handbags. Some people waste money on makeup. Some people waste money on sunglasses. Some people waste money on clothes upon clothes upon clothes. Do not waste your money. I'm not saying don't buy something good. No, Alhamdulillah. You buy if you can afford it. MashaAllah. Enjoy. Liyadhar athara ni'mat Allahi alayk. When Allah has blessed you, it's good to make use of it. People should be able to see, mashallah, Allah has blessed this person. But don't waste the money. Sometimes people buy a new set of clothing for every occasion. That's not Islamic. That's not something taught. That's not something Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam would have been proud of. You don't just waste money in that way. But you try your best to realize the value of that wealth that Allah has bestowed upon you. Also, many of us had, have a very bad habit of not showing gratitude to Allah for what he has given us. Allah has bestowed upon us so much in order to understand what Allah gave you. You need to think your eyes, your nose, your ears to start with, to start with. And thereafter, we are seated here. We have goodness. We have peace. We have Iman. How many of us have thanked Allah, not just by lips to say Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Many of us, when we say Alhamdulillah, because our languages are languages besides the Arabic language, we don't even know what we've said. We say it ceremonially. That means it's just a ceremony. Alhamdulillah. Someone says something, you said Alhamdulillah, but you don't know really what exactly you said. It didn't strike you. So you say all praise is due to Allah, all thanks is due to Allah. I thank Allah in every way. I praise Allah. Alhamdulillah. So think for a moment what Allah has given you. Thank Him by tongue. Thereafter you thank Him through your deeds. What are the deeds? The greatest ingratitude my brothers and sisters is when you worship someone besides Allah, when you associate partners with Allah, when you transgress against the commands of Allah, I say Alhamdulillah, Ashukrulillah, a thousand times a day, but I missed Salatul Fajr. Was that really shukr? Was that really gratitude to Allah? I said Alhamdulillah, Tabarakallah, a thousand times a day, but I lie, I cheat, I harm other people. That is not gratitude. So my brothers and sisters, to show gratitude to Allah, develop your qualities, develop your character, develop your closeness, fulfill your duties unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of us don't really thank Allah. Similarly, when we have food that is remaining on the plate or in the pot after we have eaten a meal, my brothers and sisters, a plea to every one of you, don't throw it away. Don't throw it away. Try and do something with it. Firstly, when we take food, Let's not take so much that we won't be able to eat. Sometimes when you are hungry and you walk into a restaurant and you'd like to order food, you order as though 20 people are going to eat, but you are one man. Even the waiter keeps looking at you and smiling, thinking this little man is going to eat so much. The thing is you were hungry when you ordered. This is why when you go shopping 
And when you go to a restaurant, try and have something before you go. So that you know, or get someone else to order for you, or become into the habit of ordering a little bit. If you really want, order a little bit more. I challenge you once again, my brothers and sisters, living in this beautiful country of Qatar, mashallah. I'm sure a lot of you are used to restaurants and going out to eat. Please don't over order, order less. You want something, order slightly less than that and see how you feel. It's a challenge. Do it for the sake of Allah. Do it because you want to eradicate a bad habit. Finish up what you have ordered. Finish it. And I promise you, you will have a lot of barakah. You will have a lot of blessings. Allah will bless you in every other aspect of your life. Please, my brothers and sisters, I am literally begging you. The reason is we don't realize that Allah can take that away from us at any time. We don't want that to happen. But when you appreciate the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will grant you in abundance. You and I know that He says, La in shakartum la nakum. If you are going to be grateful, I will grant you increase. One of the signs of gratitude is not to waste. So don't waste, my brothers and sisters. These are bad habits. My brothers and sisters, the way we dress sometimes is unacceptable. Some of the sisters and even some of the brothers, they, the dress is a bad habit of theirs. They want to show people. They want to keep up with the latest in terms of the trends. Even if those trends happen to displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why should we do that? My brothers and sisters, we can change that. We are for Allah. We belong to Allah. We came from Allah. Let's do something about that. I don't need to dress because everyone is showing half of their backsides. So I need to show half of mine as well. Everyone is showing their underpants or underclothing. I need to show my clothing as well, underclothing, to make sure that the world knows there is a designer name on my behind. May Allah forgive us. It is happening more so to the males and even to the females in, in their own way. You and I know that restrictions are placed by Allah regarding dress for a specific reason. Thank Allah, you are dressed beautifully. You came to the house of Allah. Look at how you are dressed. You need to be proud of this beautiful dress because you know I was going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So dress in a respectable way. Don't fall into the bad habits. My beloved sisters, it is extremely dangerous to give in to the pressure of the trends around us that displease Allah. Yes, if there is something, if there is a good trend, then please follow it. Every time I come here, I, I find myself repeating the same hadith. Subhanallah. Whoever sets a good example, they will have a full reward of everyone who follows that example. It's a good trend, something really good. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. My brothers and sisters, I want you to pause for a moment. There are so many bad habits I have and you have. You need to think about them. Each one of you have different habits. Some people have a habit of masturbation. Some people have a habit of pornography. Some people have a habit of gambling, for example. Some have a habit of intoxicants. To mention only a few, please deal with them for the sake of Allah. We have greater problems in the ummah we need to solve. We cannot find a major pothole on the road because of my bad habit as an individual. May Allah help me to eradicate my bad habits. Some people are in communication with the opposite sex beyond a certain level which becomes haram. Yes, if there is a necessity, if you need to communicate with someone for some reason, they happen to be of the opposite sex, it is not forbidden to communicate with them within limits. But if it goes beyond that, you don't need it. Please cut it out, my brothers and sisters, for the sake of Allah. Please find it in your heart, not for me. Imagine I'm standing here, the pulpit belongs to Allah, the house belongs to Allah, and I am begging you for the sake of Allah to say, please work on your bad habits. We need you. And you need me. We need each other as an ummah. We need each other. The best way we are going to move forward, my brothers and sisters, don't be fooled. It is by working on myself to begin with. I need to develop myself. I need to give up the bad habits I have for the sake of Allah. We thank Allah that He has not exposed us. He has not made it apparent to everyone what our bad habits are. So, Eradicate them before they are exposed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. My brothers and sisters, there is a lot that can be said in this regard. I want to end by a verse of the Quran or two. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَةِ Do not lead yourself into destruction with your own hands. Your own hands. 
Imagine, some of the scholars use this verse even to express the ruling of the prohibition of something like smoking. To say you are using your own hands to harm yourself. Don't ever do that. This verse is clear that we need to eradicate our bad habits. My brothers and sisters, a lot has been said. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May He open our doors. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُمْ رَحِيمًا Don't kill yourselves. Allah is indeed merciful upon you. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Don't harm your bodies in any way. That which results in direct death and that which may result in a slow death or that which may cause any harm to your body. My brothers and sisters, we have obligations unto Allah over and above salah, over and above zakah. Sometimes a bad habit is that wherein you delay that which Allah has made obligatory upon you. Many of us, myself included, we need to work on that. The time of salah comes, cut out everything and fulfill your salah. To delay is also a bad habit. If you said to yourself, okay, there is still time for salah, I will read it just now. If that happens once or twice in your life, it may be reasonable. You might have had something important to do. But if it happens every day, for a lot of the salahs, you have a bad habit. You need to make sure you work on it. If every day you are looking at the ending of the time of the salah and not the beginning of it, you have a bad habit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. I promise you one thing, and that is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you come close to Allah, a handspan, he will come close to you an entire foot. And if you come close to Allah walking, he will come close to you rushing. So if you want to get close to Allah, start getting closer to him. If you want him to get closer to you, get closer to him and you will find that Allah will have mercy on you in all your aspects of life. Not that you will be given the millions and the billions, but you will be granted contentment by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May he bless us all.